Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of McNulty's Book Corral and I'm your host Thomas McNulty. Today we're talking about Superman. Superman, that's right, created in 1938 by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster and Superman is still being published today. And for this episode to start, this is the first of numerous episodes regarding Superman, um, we're going to look at the Golden Age, um, the beginning. Now, to start off, I want to bring to your attention something I, I understand that a lot of you are not familiar with. And that's this. DC Comics has been reprinting the Golden Age Superman in these beautiful trade paperbacks. Um, and there's a five, I think there's five on the market so far. And these are beautifully done. Let me show you what they look like. The, the books reprint the Superman stories with the original covers in full color. Uh, that's a key issue here, and they're sequential. They're the way they were originally, in the order they were originally published. So that makes this a gold mine of history here. And I think that's historically important that DC Comics has chosen to do this. Um, but I want to bring it to your attention because I don't think a lot of people know they're out there. Um, I, I don't, I'm just not confident that DC Comics has done a good job in promoting these books uh, as well as they could. Um, I've talked to a lot of people in bookstores and so forth, and they're just not familiar with the series. So here they are, and this is the first volume, and you can see the quality uh, right here uh, in order as they appeared. And these books are phenomenal. They really are. And I'm really pleased to see these on the market. Uh, so that covers the uh, 1938 and on, and so they're sequential. And this was the second volume, and again, you have the same, you have the same quality, full color reproductions of the super, the early Superman story, stories in order of their appearance. This includes the world's finest, with Batman and Robin, from the 1940s, and onward. So they're also doing this for Batman, but today we're talking about Superman, and I just want to give you an idea on the quality of these beautiful reprints. Now again, uh, highly recommended for you Superman fans to get these because the Golden Age Superman comics themselves are expensive and we've reached a point in the world of collecting where the the originals, and I'll show you examples in a moment, the originals are too brown. Uh, they're starting to deteriorate uh, and that deterioration has accelerated with the years. So I am in favor of reprinting classic pulp fiction in classic comic books from the 30s and 40s because um, that's the way to reach a new audience and this stuff does it. I just wish they did a better job um, promoting these you know than they've been doing. Um, I don't know why they haven't done that um, but maybe this will help you know. So with that said, reprinting Superman from the Golden Age has not been uh, unusual, but they're doing a high-quality sequential reprint series now. That's why I'm recommending you find those. Talk to your comic shop guy. I don't see these listed, uh, or I'm sorry, I don't see these uh, posted in bookstores. They just don't have them in stock. You can find them on Amazon, and you can find them through the DC Comics website uh, and through comic shops find them. The great stuff. So here's an example of a Golden Age Superman. Uh, <clears throat> this is Superman 47. And you can tell how dark it's getting. Um, so the comics have become really brittle with age. So again, these reprints, which will include these, uh, is a great way to do it. Here's another classic from the same period, from the 40s. Just fun stuff to have. And this is, I think, one of my favorite 1940s covers with Superman having his arm bitten by the lion. I think that's just great. I uh, really enjoy that one. So uh, obviously I have a major Superman collection. I'm just going to show you a couple here today. And this is the first episode of many relating to Superman. Um, Action Comics is actually where Superman first appeared. And here's Action Comics 79. And I think this was one of the early Kurt Swan covers here. Uh, Action Comics, and this is uh, Action Comics uh, 232. Yes, I need bifocals. You just saw me do that with my glasses. It's pretty funny. And this is Superman 100, 1955. 
So this, we're getting close to the Silver Age now, so I just wanted to, to show you some actual copies while I'm out there promoting these, um, these reprint series that DC has put out. Now again, DC has put out this reprint series for Superman, Batman, and the Silver Age uh, characters, Wonder, well, Wonder Woman as well from the Golden Age, Green Lantern, The Flash, The Legion of Superheroes, all being reprinted in this format. Highly recommended because this it, these are the new collector's items. This is the stuff that in 50 years people are going to say, boy, I wish I had that paperback reprinting that classic material because this is the way to get it. Um, I'm not saying don't collect the originals. If you can find good copies and if you can afford it, <laughs> do it. I, I've certainly done it, as you'll see in future episodes. So... With that said, I want to point out a couple of other worthy um, inclusions in the Superman collection. This is George Lowther's prose novel from 1942, The Adventures of Superman. This is the first prose novel um, written with the permission of Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. And this is the reprint edition, actually. Um, this is widely available. Either the, It's not hard to find the original or the reprint. Uh, and this adds to the Superman mythology that was created by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Um, it's a fun book to read. Uh, it's a nice collector's item to have in both the reprint or the original. Uh, I recommend that you do that. Um, you're a Superman collector. You're probably already familiar with this. I'm also recommending, if you can find this one, by Jerry, Gary Grossman, which is the Superman Serial to Serial. This book is out of print and is highly sought after by collectors. I've seen it listed on eBay for as much as... $200, which really shocks me. Um, I don't think it's a rare book. I just think people want it and they're hanging on to it. This is the book that obviously covers the classic television show from the 1950s starring the late, great George Reeves. There he is. And that show is available on DVD. And this is a great book that was a history of that television show. Um, so if you can find a copy and it's affordable, this is a great, for you book collectors, this is a great one to find. I'm really fond of this book as well. The show is my favorite. I'm also recommending by Roy Thomas, Superman the War Years, 1938-1945. This is a reprint edition, similar to the ones that I showed you, um, but it covers it covers some of the issues relating to World War II. Uh, and that's a, that's a distinction that needs to be made. Um, World War II changed everything. Um, and Roy Thomas, who is a comic book writer, I'm sure he, you're familiar with him. He wrote for Marvel for years and many other companies. He did a great job with it. There, there's a Batman edition as well. Um, if I do a Batman episode, and I think I will, I'll talk about that. Uh, this is a great book to have. It's not too expensive. You can find it discounted. Um, I think it's gone out of print, but you should check it out. Roy Thomas and Superman the War Years. Great material for you big blue collectors out there like me, and you love this stuff. Uh, you're going to check that check that out. Now, I want to mention, getting back to the originals, another reason why the originals are rare is because of the recycling programs during World War II. And I don't think enough can be said about that because there's a misconception out there um, that they're rare because people threw them away or whatever. This relates to all paper products, metal, glass, rubber, leather, all of those commodities were recycled during World War II out of necessity. That recycling program continued through the Korean War. It is a myth that the recycling uh, programs uh, stemmed from the environmentalist movement that came out of the 1960s counterculture movement. That is absolutely not true. What is true is that during World War II, recycling began out of necessity and continued. Uh, so paper was recycled exclusively and that's why the books are rare the reason they exist is because readers and collectors loved them so much they refused to part with them so hence we have pulp fiction magazines and comic books from this era are truly rare because there are not many around unlike today where everything is mass produced and can be reprinted in the blink of an eye because it's digital media um, and, and, you know, DC Comics can reprint anything anytime they want now. Uh, that wasn't the case then, so these originals are hard to find. Now, again, the sad news is that they're deteriorating because it was cheap pulp paper, 
which they used the, again, the cheap paper to keep the cost down. Um, so just an explanation there for those of you that are unfamiliar with that. I wanted to put that out there. Now I mentioned at the beginning that reprints are not unusual for comic books and I'm all in favor of that because I think that helps reach a new audience. And Superman's no exception. The dailies from 1939 to 1940, there was a, here's the first of a sequence of books that reprinted the dailies. The dailies were in black and white, of course, and, re, and appeared in newspapers. So these books are on the market, and if you can get these, I know you big blue collectors out there will enjoy having those as well. And IDW also put out the Sunday pages, and look at the fantastic cover art. This is by an artist named Poplot, Poplot? I can't I can't say his name, I apologize. Poplotsky um, did the cover art here. And these reprint the Sundays, which were in the newspapers, but in color. So the dailies were black and white, and the Sunday, the Sunday supplements were in color. Look at that fantastic artwork. And these re reprint those Sunday pages, and there's an entire group of these from IDW. The Golden Age Sundays are on the market. Um, I think they're they're fantastic, honestly. Um, so that was 43 to 46. Here's 46 to 49. And check this out. I mean, the artwork on the covers and the interior reproductions uh, are phenomenal. Now, most of the interiors were done by the, the late, great Wayne Boring, who is an underrated, I believe, underrated artist on the Superman series for decades. Uh, he continued his, his work on Superman through the 60s. Um, here's the uh, 1949 to 53 where we started to see more science fiction elements come into the series. And again, I just want to give you an idea on why you should collect these books and share them with young readers because comic books are a great way to teach reading skills to young readers because you have all of the elements there. You have the visual sequential art that tells the story and then you have the words that they can follow along and you can explain to them and help them look up the meanings of words and uh, get a better feel for the story. So here is 56 to 59. And again, this was IDW. I think there's some others of these as well. So just to give you big blue fans, and for those of you looking at comic books as a way to encourage young readers, I wanted to bring out this first episode of Superman to encourage you to use comic books to promote reading. And uh, for you collectors out there, of course, you may or may not be familiar with some of the reprints, again, that DC Comics is doing in these wonderful trade paperbacks. So there you go. More Superman to come. Uh, I, I do have a major collection that I'm really proud of. I'm a big blue fan. So we'll get to that soon, but I think that's a good start. As always, remember to stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, read a book. Yeah.